Hi, this is Ben Sullins, and welcome to my preview of my new course on Enterprise Business Intelligence with Tableau Server. In this course, I talk through the basics of installing and configuring Tableau Server. I show you how users interact with Tableau Server from Tableau Desktop. We go into creating that single source of the truth with Tableau Data Server. We look at how to organize our content on Tableau Server so that it's easy to find and we don't come up with a really messy situation and something that is still serves the user's needs get into the more advanced topics of high availability and then customizing Tableau Server later. Let's do a quick run through here and I'll show you some of the little tidbits of the course and hopefully give you uh, a sense of what it's about and if it's something you're interested in, uh, there's links on the page here that you can use to go watch the full thing. So I start with talking about Tableau Server's architecture, how Tableau has many different interfaces that it supports from desktops, laptops, tablets, and mobile. It stands in between your data sources and it's what users interact with. So on one side you have your data sources which could be anything from a database or an Excel file, a big data system like Hadoop, or even cloud data sources like Google Analytics and Salesforce.com. And Tableau acts as the interface for this in two ways. It allows a live connection which means when you go to a dashboard in Tableau you can open the dashboard and it'll run the query live against your data source which gives you that real-time feel. It also can pose challenges architecturally if you want to deliver really fast dashboards. Some data sources aren't designed for analytics and fast reporting. Uh, so depending on your source, uh, th this, this could be a good thing or it could uh, lead to bad performance. The other option is to store the data in memory. And what that is in Tableau Server is it allows you to actually pull the data out of your source system and land it on the server in a columnar format. So it compresses the data and then when somebody hits the view, it doesn't have to go out to the data source that already has it. And when it does that, it loads it all into memory and gives a really fast performance for your end user. The challenge there is that now you're not just asking Tableau Server to be the interface between your you know, laptop or desktop and your data source. You're asking for it to be the data source itself. So in those situations, we need a lot more horsepower. And so in this course, I talk about the architecture here and I talk about the different types of models to set up and the different scalability options for you know, your environment there and how to get Tableau Server up and running. Next, I talk about the taxonomies. And the taxonomies, is how we lay out the content in Tableau Server. This is a logical version here where you have at the high level the server or a cluster. Inside of that you have sites, which are, think of them as different instances of Tableau running. Inside of that you have a project, which is kind of a logical container for workbooks, and inside of workbooks are views. These are the logical entities we have when talking about how to organize the content on Tableau Server. To put this in a real world context, we may have something where we have a certified site and an uncertified site. In the uncertified site, anything goes. People can upload anything they want, they can share it with whomever they want. This is where a lot of the data discovery happens, a lot of the really interesting analysis that people can do without being constrained by processes or rules about how to use the, the technology. Now, that can lead to data that isn't pure and maybe isn't the entire picture. So what we have for the kind of more enterprise feel is the certified site. And the certified site is data and reports that have been vetted through a process by somebody that knows like the business intelligence team and has been assured for the business side that this data is correct, the format's valid, it, we will support it and we will make sure that everything in here goes smoothly. Using this process, users can have the unfettered access to the uncertified site where they can have the free form exploratory analysis which Tableau really encourages and this is where a lot of the really kind of gold nuggets uh, that you find in your data are buried now for the enterprise stuff for when you you know have an earnings call and you need information that you 100 percent know is accurate that's where the certified zone comes in and I suggest you have a process in between them to ensure that kind of trust in the data in the course, I go into more details about how to actually implement this on your Tableau server, how to set up sites, how to set up users, how to set up projects, and how to control access to each one therein. When we get into the advanced section, we talk about high availability. And the first thing to understand is what is high availability in Tableau terms? Well, when you first set up Tableau server, the simplest way is to use a single node. You download the software and you install it. It's as simple as that. You click next about 10 times, give it some uh, domain credentials, and you're good. Well, in high availability systems, the idea is that what if that system were to go down? 
you don't want Tableau necessarily to go down as it becomes more mission critical to your organization. So what we do is we set up this three node system. Now you can have more nodes, but three is the minimum you need. And what you'll notice here is that you have a gateway which acts as a load balancer. And in Tableau 8.1, which is coming out uh, relatively soon, you'll actually be able to uh, get rid of the gateway and use an external load balancer such as F5. Now down below you have your worker nodes. In these worker nodes you have an uh, active and a passive data engine and you have an active and a passive repository. Now that's the configuration that Tableau currently supports. Notice that the rest of the services are actually shared. So even though the data engine repository are active passive, the rest of the load that's being handled is actually spread throughout the two different machines. So it's giving you better performance and if one of these systems were to go down, it can fail over to the other system, so now that system becomes the active one. So it gives you the resiliency you need to come back from a node failure, as well as spreading out the load so it gives you better performance. Now what happens if the gateway goes down? Well, Tableau also supports the ability to add a backup gateway. Like I mentioned in Tableau version 8.1, this need to have a backup gateway is going to be mitigated because you'll now be able to set up an external load balancer. We don't have details on that yet and exactly what's going to be launched in the product, uh, but when we do, we'll publish an update here for you to, uh, to, to make sure you're up to speed with that. The last thing I talk about in the course is customizing Tableau. There's some basic things you can customize out of the box, and then there are other things here that uh, I've developed that are things that are not supported by Tableau, but I've used in many instances to help customize. One is adding Google Analytics to Tableau Server. This is a great way to understand how many people are coming to your site, the time they're spending on the site, what views, what the flow is, all that kind of stuff, including real-time analytics about your Tableau Server. And the second piece here is the real-time collaboration. By integrating together JS, which is an open source platform from Mozilla Labs, you can add a way to have your users start a conversation about data while looking at the same page without having to have any other enterprise type software in the mix. You don't need to do a screen share. You can literally from Tableau, click a button, get a link, share that with your buddy. They go to the same page and you guys start having either a text chat about it or a audio conversation all through your browser, all using JavaScript. It's pretty amazing, and I, I think that that's something that really helps increase the usefulness of something like Tableau by allowing your users to have a real-time discussion about data while being on the same page, literally. So to recap, we go through installation and configuration. We talk about authoring and deploying. In the intermediate section, we talk about the single source of the truth and how to organize your content. And lastly, we get into some advanced concepts about how to scale this for your business as well as to customize it to fit within your product line or your enterprise environment that you have there. I hope you've enjoyed this preview and I hope you take a look at the course. Thanks so much.